Hello everyone, welcome to the Eurex and Option City webinar, Trading V-Stocks, Market Making, Modeling, and Risk Management in Volatility Futures. My name is Andrew Lissy, I'm the Algo Product Manager here at Option City. Joining me on the call is, is Bob Kelly. he's our, the Director of Product Management at Option City, as well as Rex Jones, who is the VP of Product Development at Eurex. Rex is joining in with us from Germany, so he will uh, get started first. Um, before we begin though, at the end of the webinar, we'll field any questions you may have. Along the way, feel free to type in any of those questions into the Q&A box on your GoToWebinar screen, um, but we'll address them all at the end. Uh, so given that, Rex, uh, would you like to kick it off? Sure. Thanks a lot for the intro, Andrew. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Rex Jones. I work for Eurex over here in Frankfurt and I'm a product manager for our VSTOX product and I'm thrilled to kick things off tonight um, with a brief overview of our volatility derivatives on the VSTOX and uh, we'll then dive into um, the uh, liquidity situation in our products and um, then also outline the market making opportunities. And I'll be doing all of that as soon as I figure out how to forward to the next slide. And there we go. <clears throat> So with no further delay, it's pretty obvious that this is live indeed, um, like trading in Eurex every day. And um, so what, what's the V-Stocks all about? Um, the V-Stocks is the uh, European equivalent of the VIX, and it's derived from market prices of the Eurostock 50 options, and it measures uh, not the volatility, but the square root of implied variance of all of the Eurostock 50 options um, of a certain environment. And um, our main index on which we base futures and options, um, I've tried to depict that here with a little seesaw. Um, from today's perspective, um, had a little bit of exposure of uh, January Eurostox options and um, a lot more exposure from February options. Um, so it's a linear interpolation um, between the first two of the eight sub-indexes that our index provider stocks calculate for it. And they do that out to two years. When, um, when looking at a volatility number for a specific Eurostock 50 expiry, we could uh, start on the top left here and uh, just have a look at the variance exposure of the at the money option. And um, what we see when then looking at its neighboring strikes is that there's a different level of variance contribution um, throughout the entire strip of options. And a few years ago, somebody came up with an ingenious weighting of um, inversely weighting the variance contribution of each uh, strike um, <clears throat> in an inverted fashion, which uh, then allows us to arrive at one uniform volatility measure for a given expiry in the Eurostock 50 options. And uh, that's what is done on a sub-index level and um, that has been uh, thrown together into our 30-day main index. Again, live, uh, we see that our uh, red boxes are moved a little bit. What I have here is a, a screenshot out of Eurostock 50 options, and um, there's some pretty unique filtering criteria that our index provider stocks uses um, when calculating the V-Stocks index. Um, I mean, first and foremost, the, uh, the V-Stocks doesn't really uh, move uh, dependent upon whatever happens in the Eurostock 50 index itself. It, it reacts uh, to changes in volatility that's reflected in these options prices. And um, stocks uses some filter criteria that set it apart um, that are surely noteworthy. I mean, uh, firstly, well, option prices that are one-sided are not considered at all. And um, of course, all option quotes have to be you know, within the Eurex market-making parameters of at least 8% for Eurostock 50 options. But uh, looking at prices here, we see that these options are you know, typically quoted an index point wide um, or for lower deltas a lot tighter than that. Um, what's noteworthy is that uh, the VSTOX index does not entail um, deep, uh, I'm sorry, uh, far out of the money options. So any series with a midpoint of less than half an index point is taken out of the index calculation. And that's done for a very simple reason, that being that worthless puts that you know, kind of trade at cabinet prices, they really entail little to no new volatility information. We've uh, modeled the index primarily for uh, asset management clients that are, who are looking to understand the index in Excel with Bloomberg feeds. So uh, do feel free to drop me an email. Um, I'm happy to share that with you. The um, most important elements in our product specifications of the futures and options that we have on the VSOX is surely the contract value um, with 100 euros per index point. If I buy the future at 25 and sell it at 26, I may, I may make 100 euros. 
and we offer eight monthly expiries on the futures and on the option side, both products that settle in cash, which is convenient, um, be kind of difficult to deliver the uh, replication portfolio of Eurostox 50 options. Um, and the final settlement is calculated as the average VSTOX level over the last half hour of trading in the expiring contract. We um, have about 10 banks um, and another handful of brokers who offer execution services for institutional trade sizes. Um, so what we know is block trades are possible and based on futures for sizes greater than a thousand contracts. And um, maybe not at this time of day, but um, tomorrow morning if you want to have a look, the uh, ticker symbol in Bloomberg is V2X uh, Oman for the options and V2X index CT for the new stocks futures. So what's going on on the um, volume side and in terms of liquidity? In uh, 2013, we traded uh, 25,000 contracts a day, two-thirds more than the previous year, and uh, open interest is anywhere we between 200 trading and 200,000 contracts on the side, and the options um, we're trading 7,500 options a day, you know, with Subgen and uh, Optiver and um, another market maker is streaming prices there currently. Rex, if I can jump in with a question. Uh, so one thing we see over on our side with the VIX product is a lot of the SPX options market makers are starting to dabble in trading VIX, both futures and options. Are you guys seeing kind of similar uh, behavior over there with, with the stocks and the V stocks? I don't think we're quite there yet in terms of numbers. Um, we have 25 Eurostox 50 options market makers across Europe um, who regularly fulfill the market making obligations and you know, act as price providers on the phones as well as providing screen liquidity. And um, you know the numbers I just cited shows that you know maybe 10% of those market makers are, are also active in these stocks to date. Okay. And uh, I mean, that, you know, that level of liquidity is surely also reflected in what we see um, in, in terms of screen prices. But um, it's kind of like with transformers. You know, don't believe what you see at a first instance. The year, you know, only seeing 50 lots may be discouraging from an institutional perspective to uh, to get trades done. We frequently see trade sizes on the future side of, it, of 500 contracts and more without actually moving bid offer spread. It's, it's in the nature of how futures market makers quote nowadays, you know, over the situation five or 10 years ago. Um, they use automated tools, you know, they will replenish liquidity as soon as their quotes trade, um, stick a limit order in there and see what happens. And, you know, you'll definitely get, uh, you're definitely able to sell more than the 48 months on the, uh, on the bid side of that November contract. Um, the option side, are, you know, the options are also quoted. Um, we just uh, had a new market maker who came active um, two weeks ago there. Um, and in the dealer market, you know, trade sizes of 5,000 contracts are very easily done and frequently observed. The, um, the interesting thing about the VSTOCKS product and, and you know, any futures uh, and options on volatility is, is, of course, the ability to trade term structure. Unlike our front month driven um, DAX or Eurostox 50 futures, um, we see a lot of trading um, across all eight expiring months. And this is because, um, well, people tend to focus um, not just on overall volatility levels, but also um, at what level volatility is trading um, in terms of the different expiry months. Um, for, so, you know, trading those different 30-day segments of the volatility futures curve, um, so, to come, so to name it. And, you know, just looking over the last three years, we see that in two-thirds of the cases, the curve was usually in contango. So, um, front-month futures were trading at a discount in comparison to back-month futures. But when volatility rises, the uh, term structure flattens or actually can also go into backwardation. And um, that offers a, a range of very interesting um, counter spread trading opportunities um, that I'll be diving into in about one minute's time. Before that, um, I think it's important to point out that um, calendar spread trading itself at your has, has trained, changed dramatically in 2013. Uh, over are the days on the left when it was only possible to trade the first three uh, contract months with fully integrated calendar spreads. Um, now we have the situation on the right where not only are the first eight um, expiring months available for outright futures trading, but every day our trading system also you know, creates these synthetic markets where um, all 28 different permutations between these eight calendar spreads um, uh, these eight outrights are available and tradable as calendar spreads. 
So um, yeah, would, that, that's convenient from an execution perspective because um, I don't have to go through the bid offer spread of the outrights anymore. Uh, so, yeah, that kind of slashes my transaction costs. I'm looking to do a calendar spread trade in half. Um, and I'd also like to point out this feature that the earring system offers in terms of implied in and implied out pricing. Um, not only are the calendar spreads fed with whatever is quoted in the outrights, but it also works vice versa. On the left side, we see that um, there's a 50 lot unique order um, that was entered uh, in the spread itself at a price of negative 170. And then we see those 50 lots show up again um, in, in this July 12 order book um, by virtue of leaning, um, by virtue of the uh, June July calendar spread price of negative 170, leaning on the uh, June uh, ask of 30, and then synthetically adding 50 lots in terms of execute size. That's a pretty nifty feature um, that, that not only you know ensures that the calendar spreads themselves are auto populated, but you know when spread quotes come into there, you know, it works the other way as well. In terms of um, you know why I'm diving into this so deeply, um, about 15% of our volume is currently traded as calendar spreads, which is something we would dream of in DAX contracts, which are entirely front month driven, and people only come to trade calendar spreads um, when we um, you know come close to triple witching, and um, you know we strongly recommend um, the calendar spread approach to clients, you know not just because it's too less of commission, but because it, it makes the timing of trading a lot um, more predictable and, and, and less cumbersome and painful. Um, you know, frequently cited example could be taken from last year in September, where you know I think there was opportunity there. Um, the VSOX was trading in AT. Firstly, that's three index points under its long-term mean. Um, but going long does come at a cost of about one ball point per month. Uh, so you know you have to be really exact with your observation of hmm, um, is the government uh, budget crisis going to be resolved or no? We actually had a shutdown in October and volatility levels increased. But while the shutdown was still on and no resolution was really in sight, volatility levels decreased again to put me you know just about where I was when initiating this trade. And um, doing such a trade with a calendar spread you know, comes first of all at lower um, risk outlay, but um, actually produced a pretty profitable um, outcome for me here um, by uh, going along the three month and short six month futures expiries um, during exactly the same time period. But you know, I was able to capture 1.6 index points for being right. So you know, um, just going outright means you have to be right, and your timing has to be right. But you know, with with volatility and the, and the VSOX levels coming back down, <laughs> you, the investor wasn't right enough, um, and and that's something that can clearly be mitigated in the, uh, with counter spread trading. Um, uh, I'm going to be a little uh, easy on the option side. We're um, still looking for ways to get them uh, approved in the United States for direct membership uh, clients of, of Eurex to uh, access them. Currently, um, going through a London broker um, is, is your uh, best choice uh, not to get uh, to, to access these products. Um, which uh, brings me to my last slide. Um, so what do we have on offer? Um, we, we currently still operate a market making program um, in B stocks futures, which um, is somewhat wider than what market makers typically quote, um, you know, looking to get executions on their quotes. Um, we are looking for market makers to quote all of the expiring months, 80% of the current European trading hours, um, and either a size of 500 or 100, and the spread is outlined here, it's absolutely doable. And um, we let people train for free uh, for fulfilling these. So set for more growth um, on our side. And uh, we're looking forward to um, what Bob and Andrew have to present on um, how to become active um, with existing uh, pricing capabilities on the Stock 50 side to, uh, yeah, uh, to make people in the audience the next price takers or price makers in VSTOX. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Rex. I think that was uh, that, that was great. Very informative. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Bob Kelly, our director of product management here at Option City, and he's going to walk through trading V stocks and uh, with the Metro platform. Thank you, Andrew. So, 
my focus is going to be mainly on on options and how how someone might trade these stocks options uh, through Metro. And this first page is a Metro modeling page uh, designed to just show a, a Metro skew. Uh, Metro has several different ways to skew options. Uh, this particular one is a pr fairly simple quadratic. You'll notice the red and blue dots on the screen, which are the implied bid and offers. And one of the interesting uh, things I, I noticed right away when I when I made this slide was the uh, the ten vol spread between the bid and ask, which I think uh, probably means there's some opportunity in this product and is and is worth looking at. So um, that's that's our model page. Uh, we have we have fixed and floating skews. This is this particular skew is a floating skew, which floats along a user defi defined vol path, which adjusts deltas and gammas to more accurately describe how an option is moving as the underlying moves. Uh, and yeah, as I said, there we have several different modeling capabilities uh, depending on the asset you're, you're trading. So that's, that's a SKU page and, and how you might model the VSTOX options. And uh, let's move to the, to the next slide. This is uh, Metro's city market, which gives the user the opportunity to see the market bid ask relative to their theos. Uh, any of the widgets in Option City are very configurable. Uh, all the columns can be uh, configured to exactly what the user wants to see. Option City has the ability to create rules that are basically if then statements that you can assign colors to to highlight different opportunities based on your criteria. We do have a couple default columns in here, uh, the, the BE being bid edge column where you, you might see the 84%, the uh, which is an indication of how much the bid is exceeding your Theo value to kind of draw your attention to specific areas on the, on the city market. Uh, you can quickly manage your quotes from here, setting edge, setting quantity, uh, you can also create missions from this page, which are electronic eye, which can be view only or uh, or auto auto trade with with auto hedging capabilities. And obviously, you can you can click trade from this this window as well. But this is basically where a user would uh, manage his quotes and uh, view market opportunities as they come in. Uh, as you can see at the top, there's a number of different products. Up there, um, we've got the, the V stocks options, futures, and the stocks 50 options and futures as well. So you can bring up futures ladders from this page. You can also filter this page to strategies. So you can see all the strategies that have been uh, RFQ'd or have been activated in, in the market and filter them as well to uh, specific ones you wanna see based on volume that's traded or strategy type and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the the Metro City Market page. So, next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is Metro's RFQ viewer, and uh, the day I opened it, uh, I found a Jan 14 25 call RFQ for the for the V stocks. Um, this, the RFQ, uh, RFQ viewer allows you to quickly place orders on desired RFQs as they come in. Uh, you'll notice the top panel is blank. That top panel is a hot list area where users can define uh, RFQs that are important to them. In other words, define edge, define last traded quantity, define bid ask sizes that will be moved to the hot list as they meet your criteria. So over the course of the day, as if you're trading stocks 50 and, and B stocks options, for example, as 100, 200 RFQs come in and the bottom of the page has a RFQ that's starting to actively trade, if you have a filter set on for last traded quantity, it'll move it to the, to the top of the page. And I think Option City does a very good job of managing RFQs. You can quickly 
respond and start quoting these RFQs from this page or uh, submit orders from this page. And uh, I think everyone will agree that strategy trading is becoming more more relevant every day and this type of functionality is something that's that's very important so that's uh that's option city's rfq viewer uh this slide is is a basic risk portfolio with a um, synthetic v stock option position um, as with all our widgets this risk report is is very configurable uh, including the span that you're looking at the underlying moving, uh, how you group months and futures together, or, or um, how you view those reports. As you can see across the top, there's a risk report, Greek report, month report, position report, and edge report, which give you different views and, and uh, different information. The risk report in Option City is is again very configurable. We have a we have about 25 to 30 different Greeks that you can drag and drop into a configuration area. Hit done, and your new report will be created. Um, and again, I mean, this is in my mind. This is kind of the, the V stocks is just another asset class, and and this is a risk report depicting what your risk looks like up and down seven percent. Uh, as the underlying moves and certain vol assumptions are being made based on the volatility path that you have described in the modeling section we spoke of earlier. So that's that and I'm going to hand it over to Andrew now who will talk a little bit on freeway and how that can be integrated with your VSTOCKS trading. Thanks Bob. So I think the main point to convey here with, with Freeway is uh, the idea that Freeway is the algo engine that sits on top of Option City's main software offering. So all the features that Bob just showed you that exist in Metro, you know, anything related to modeling or quoting or sending orders or any of that, is all very easy to algorithmically define using Java, using code, uh, in order to basically create your own custom tailored solutions for for quoting or for market making or for market taking in uh, in any product, but specifically I think V-Stocks and stocks are very well suited to it. Um, the idea here that I'd like to really talk about over the next couple slides is you know, how anyone that's that's currently quoting or has a view on, on stocks 50 options uh, can very easily take that and, and make markets very quickly, very easily in, in V-Stocks futures. And then obviously from there, if you choose to, you know, to also make markets and VSTOCK options, that's also you know, very, very easy. Um, so the, the basic diagram is on your screen right now. Essentially what you're doing is you're taking that SKU that, that you've already put in for VSTOCK, for, for Stocks 50, um, and that's directly feeding into your freeway algo engine um, and the algorithm that's, that's generating that fair value for the, the VSTOCK futures. Um, so what that does is essentially constantly pulls the, the stocks 50 options as well as, as your SKU on it and comes up with a live price for, for V stocks from that. Um, from there, the, the algo can generate both futures quotes and, and spread quotes in V stocks just to keep you in the market and, and allow you to participate in that, in that wide spread that we saw earlier. To, to illustrate a little more about how this actually works, so and this, this screen is going to look very familiar. This is the, the screen that Bob showed you earlier. Um, but what this screen is showing is basically the difference between my own interp interpretation or my own view on the, the SKU in Stocks 50 and what the market is currently implying. So if you look on the, on the downside, I'm, I'm just about even with the market. But as I kind of get closer at the money and, and the, the upside stuff, I start to have a divergence from what the market is pricing in. So obviously from this divergence, this is going to dictate the markets I make in my options on, on the standard stocks. However, what I can also do is use this divergence to directly feed my price on V stocks. Um, so from there, essentially what I can do is using that formula that, that Rex showed earlier, I can quickly build out a price in V stocks and I can then submit that directly to Eurex and have that populate you know, both in, in the outrights and in the spreads. 
Um, you know, so I think, you know, without getting into too much detail here, I think the, in, some of it's out of scope for this specific presentation. Um, you know, but I think the important thing is really with the Option City platform, um, you can very quickly get started on one product, but also kind of get that second product for free. So there's really no, no reason if you're, you know, if you're quoting stocks options and, you know, and you put a lot of time and effort and money and research into, you know, into building your SKU properly for that. Uh, you may as well also quote fee stocks because you know as Rex said, you know there's there's some opportunity there. There's uh, you know with given the markets and given the incentivization program, uh, it can very easily be a very profitable product to trade. Um, and given that you know with the combination of Metro and Freeway with Option City, um, you know we make it easy and we make it you know very uh, very quick to get up and running if you're a market maker. So with that, we're about out of time. I'd encourage everyone that's listening right now to submit any questions you have through GoToWebinar. There is a there's a QA section on your on the bar that that you're currently logged into. Um, we'll take any questions over the next couple minutes that people submit, and uh, you know we'll also display some of the contact information for any any further follow up questions. Um, so we have a question. I'll kick this over to Rex. It says, "How did how did the volume on V stocks trading develop over time?" Um, in terms of 2013 over 2012, it's uh, two thirds up. The um, the options uh, were initially listed in March of 2010, um, so from zero to seven and a half thousand. Um, the biggest growth period um, was surely in 2012 after we received a no action letter from the CFTC that allowed us to uh, you know, roll out our products directly to U.S. clients as well and not just here in Europe. Sure, so we have another question. Can you elaborate on how the V stock skew gets fed into the I'm sorry, how the stock skew gets fed into the V stocks pricing model? Are you using the formula for the V stocks index or is there more to it? Um, so the way it works is basically there's a there's a very tight integration between the metro screen that you saw earlier, so the the screen that actually shows your SKU and the the actual algo. So from a logistics standpoint, the, the SKU that you see there is on the server, so the algo engine can directly access that. Once it's able to access that, essentially what you have is you have a volatility for each strike. So using that volatility for each strike, you can use the, you can use the, the direct math formula that the, that the Eurex uses to calculate their V-stocks, except you're using your SKUs, and what that does is basically allows you to reflect your own view on the fair volatility SKU into your price for the V-stocks futures. Um, this is another one for Rex. Is there any timeline for making V stocks options available to traders in the U.S.? It's um, not as easy as it uh, as it looks to me. Um, currently, the the quick answer is no, um, but we are absolutely working on this and um, making preparations on the site so that we can do the compliance with um, yeah, the rules um, that the uh, uh, FCC and CFTC and a uh, joint ruling have to have set forth. Um, but it's not going to be in the next three months. Great. Well, thank you. Um, we have another question asking about, can you email us the presentation? Uh, both the recording of this session will be posted to our website within 24 hours. Uh, at optioncity.com. Also, if you'd like a copy of this presentation, uh, please contact any of the people you see on this page right here, or our marketing manager, Sarah McNabb, and her email address is smcnabb uh, at optioncity.com. She's at the bottom. Didn't see that. Thanks, Bob. Um, another one for Rex. What are some of the major differences between VIX futures and VSTOX futures? Without really wanting to make that comparison, I think 
think I kind of touched on it when uh, when talking about the contract specifications. Um, <laughs> the obvious one is surely in terms of traded volume, and um, uh, the U.S. has a very long story to tell in terms of volatility trading. Um, not just because the variance market remains to be very strong um, and, and also benefits from a, uh, a very, very active retail participation in the, um, in the slew of ETNs that have, that have you know, been listed and successfully gained assets and uh, surely help um, you know, with this daily base volume um, that you know, goes between arbitraging the ETNs on the VIX and in the VIX futures themselves. The, um, so besides liquidity, I mean, the technical differences are, um, well, the V-Stocks trades at higher levels um, because the uh, Eurostox 50 index itself is more volatile than the S&P 500 is. It has um, a lot less, less constituents, so there's less diversification, and um, there's a much higher um, contribution of um, banking and financial stocks in the Euro stocks 50, um, which has especially come into play over the last two to three years with the Euro crisis. Um, it was quite Euro-centric, but you know, still had big, big impact to the United States in terms of overall market development. But it offered a lot of you know, inter-product spread trading possibilities between these two measures. So, um, you know, having a uh, realized volatility of um, nearly 30% in the euro stocks coming from banking stocks in comparison to only 18% um, of its contribution in the S&P 500 is, you know, surely makes it a lot more nervous um, and, and can help explain, you know, why the uh, these stocks trades at a, at a premium or, you know, typically trades about four volatility index points higher um, than the VIX. But um, you know they may be highly correlated, but that doesn't mean that they're you know stuck to one uh, stuck to one another. Um, that spread does move and um, you know create some opportunities in the process of doing that. So along those lines, Rex, we have another question: Have you seen any market difference in volumes or open interest in the V stocks uh, since the VIX started their expanded hours? Um, we've been watching that closely, and you know of course. Um, Thinking about you know, the opposite move ourselves um, to increase the, the time of overlap between both products um, you know, into the Chicago midday, um, we haven't really seen. I mean, what we haven't seen is definitively we haven't seen a negative impact on the V stocks product. Um, even though during the morning hours in London, the VIX futures are trading as much as 5,000 uh, VIX futures equivalent, which is you know a, a pretty pretty good figure. Um, but it, you know, it, we don't see any indication when looking at intraday histograms of volumes in these stocks that you know this is an exodus of, of you know clients who uh, are just looking to express a global macro view in volatility um, out of the V stocks into the mix. Um, we you know, are, are grateful you know, to, to see this as you know complementary products that you know only offer more volatility trading opportunities. Um, you know, other than, than you know. Or, uh, 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 like transatlantic approach. Um, question: What are the current trading hours in in V stocks? And you kind of touched on you're looking at expanded hours on your side. Are there any plans right now for any uh, changes in those hours? Well, uh, nothing that I've taken to the board, so nothing that's ready for the press. But um, Euro stock fifty, you know, trades until ten o'clock our time, and um, <clears throat> which is uh, three p.m. Chicago, and currently um, our markets are open from 9 a.m. Frankfurt to 17.30, so until 5.30. Um, does that make it 2.30 in the morning your time um, until 10.30 in the morning? And Eurostock 50 is surely a good reference mm -hmm. for you know, what a potential extension would look like. Uh, let's see, expand on DAX and SNI. Are there any plans to launch a similar volatility index on the DAX or SMI? Um, not currently. Um, we've more or less shelved those for the time being. I mean, um, we do have uh, you know, price providers who would be interested in it from um, the distribution of structured products here in Europe, but also you know, in terms of the creation of ETNs. Um, we've seen them to be focused on, on the B stocks for now. 
and um, you know, honestly, I mean, these are you know both underlying that that you know don't have a lot of constituents would feature a very high level of correlation to the V stocks. Uh, watering down liquidity is, is not really in our interest right now, and um, you know, they, we had them until 2009, and um, you know, we're we're looking to uh, you know reach reach volume levels of at least you know 50,000 B stock futures a day before we're considering it in absence of you know a, a vivid structured product market uh, market for B stocks. Um, do you provide or will you provide the daily volume and open interest for both futures and options on VSTOCKS? Uh, we do on our website every day, yes, and I'm happy to do that um, on request from uh, anybody who's tuned in today. You know, just send me an email. Um, you know, we're, we're happy to provide support where we can. And then the final question is, what is the definition of the VSTOCKS exactly? Is it the 30-day forward like the VIX? Or is it the forward exactly between the F14 and G14 expirations of the Euro stocks? Um, the, um, the index calculation is, is very much like the VIX. Um, the, um, the exception to note is um, that the VIX index um, actually does an extrapolation process if the um, front month um, options expiry has less than eight trading days to go, and stocks only does this process if there's less than two trading days to go. Um, but otherwise, it's the forward starting and flight volatility just like the thing. Great. Well, that looks like uh, we got through all the questions. Um, thank you for everyone who have, that have joined us. You know, once again, if you have any questions about Option City, V stocks, Eurex, or any of that, uh, please contact anybody on the slide that you see right now. And on behalf of Option City and Eurex, we thank you for tuning in to the webinar and hope you have a great day.